this started, get this pushing. I almost didn't do this, y'all. I got my exercise on, did a bit of a home vlog recording, and I was just like, nah. And almost was like, you know what? I could take this day off. But then I remember Friday night, I said I was coming back Tuesday. Plus, I had already taken the holidays off for Thanksgiving. So, we're back. Welcome to the Bonnet Chronicles. I'm going to get the word out and we'll get started. Whether the chat fills up, you know how we do this. And we're going to start with a bit of more Samba stuff. And I just want to give my condolences to the Carter family. Um... It's not easy to talk about loss and point blank. Let me get this really quick. When you know that people that you love are no longer here, it is a hard thing to talk about. So, you know, this wasn't a good week for the Carter family. It was already on top of the fact that former President Jimmy Carter had to go into hospice this year. So these were people who devoted their whole entire lives to just being good people, not even their faith or anything related. They were just hard working people. They worked towards mental health issues and just looking after people, even after people tried to clown on President Carter's presidency, which honestly, you know, a little bit before my time, I was like a baby when he was president, so I don't know. I just know that the man continued to serve us all the way up to his late 90s, building houses for people. And then his wife constantly championed mental health, which you know is personal to me. And it's hard knowing that she's no longer here, but it's also hard reading this article where they talked about the years that they've spent together, they were married 77 years. And now President Carter, who's in hospice, has to go on without his partner. And to me, that's a lot. So let me get the word out, y'all, and then we'll get to this. Welcome to the Bonnet Chronicles. I'm your host, Kalari GXC. Let's see. Okay, we're just going to get that word out, let people know that we are live, and get this started, because honestly, like I said, I was making all kinds of excuses, because you know, you're just tired. I don't think I've recouped from all the holiday stuff, the move, and everything else. It's not to make excuses. I'm human. I think a human person can only do so much, and... Like I said, I don't want to keep making excuses. And welcome to the chat, Beans. Welcome, uh, Balor. I just, like I said, I was going to be like, no, I don't feel like doing this today. But there is still a lot to talk about. And just thinking about this article here where they talk about 77 years together. And just the fact that when we look back on some of our former presidents... When they eventually get to that age where they're no longer here, I hope that people can talk about years of you doing service. Whether people like our current president or not, which I don't understand the negative, because President Biden came in with absolutely no work done, has been doing the best he can with domestic stuff and the global crap. And I'm not going to stop reminding you all of that because some of you tend to forget the amount of work a president has to do compared to what he came into. So I know next year is going to be contentious enough as it is, and I'm going to get to a big target in a few minutes. But the fact that they can list both President Carter and his former First Lady Rosalind Carter, who just passed, good work. That's what you should be striving for in your life. If your life isn't full of things that people can note about you, whether it's good, bad, or in between, would you really live? And the fact that they spent 77 years as partners. I'm telling you, I've seen it in my own family when those long-term partners are separated by the mortality coil, as I like to call it. It's not a good feeling. 
So be kind to your partners. Be loving to your partners. Be gentle with each other. And be understanding that we're human beings, you know? And I'm not just saying I almost got in trouble the other night and I'm just related back to something I might react to later on in this Bonnet Chronicles. You know, I've been on the foodie kick. I know you know <laughs> beans. She's been on my last nerve and she says some stupid crap about, ooh, I want to be transparent because apparently she's in her full diabetes arc. So it's been a it's been a very weird venture into the girl world sphere, and I don't know if I like it, but I'm here to see where it goes. The whole idea, though, of not understanding the fact that good doesn't have to have a party banner, doesn't have to have an affiliation normally, but when you're a good person, people will recognize the good you've done. And unfortunately, there's a lot of bad former presidents. When Trump dies, I doubt we're going to get glowing reports from anybody but places like maybe Breitbart and Fox News. The rest of the world is going to be like, wow, about time. And I'm not going to be nice about it. I can't stand the fucker, so I'm not going to pretend like, oh, I'm going to have decorum. I'm going to sit up here with a champagne flute when he dies. I really want to outlive that fucker just because of the people that I lost when he was president. The people who we didn't have to lose, we lost unnecessarily because he downplayed the pandemic. So I'm never going to let that be forgotten. I'm not going to forget the people that died before the pandemic, the soldiers that were lost, that we still don't even know the full story of. Allies who died when Yemen had to deal with his fuck shit. So, no, I am not going to be one of those people that are like, oh, we just showed the quorum when 45 finally kicks the bucket. I'm going to hoop it and holler it up because that is my level petty. And everybody else who wants to pretend like when they pass, oh, I'm going to feel sorry for Trump and the Trump family and words of condolences, I'm going to cackle. I'm going to have a champagne flute and I'm going to toast the world being better off without him. Which is something that I could never say. I'm sad right now about the Carter's loss because we need more good in this world. And with Miss Rosalind's passing, it's one less good person, one less person fighting for the good fight that we have while we're stuck with some of these people who they don't appreciate anything in this world. And they take their lives for granted. So if you're still here, try to be more like Rosalind and Jimmy Carter. Try to be more thinking beyond yourself and others. Try to just be less petty. And I know I say that as a hypocrite because I'm fully petty. But at least I try to put a less negative in this world and keep my petty to calling out dumb fuck shit. Speaking of which, we've got the GOP full of their mess. But they have declared their golden person. Is it Ron DeSantis at all? I was kind of shocked by this. I did not think that she would win their, uh, well, let me get rid of this article because that's why it's not showing. <laughs> I didn't think she was going to be their golden girl. And let me make this a little bit bigger. But apparently, from all the rebelings that I've seen and several articles, including that rag that I can't stand the hill, because apparently the hell seems to want to be king and queen makers now. Nikki Haley is coming out. She fought through all the trenches. And you can see this picture that the hell was using where she's looking at Chris Christie like, oh, thanks, girl. But it's going to be me. Apparently, the GOP think that, and they see the trajectory. America is ready for a female president. It's not going to be this bitch. Because she doesn't seem to understand the levels of misogyny and actual racism she's going to have to navigate in her own party. The fact that GOP's only pushing her because they really don't have anything else going for them. Like, is it going to be DeSantis who's literally running a militia and his own state into the ground? Chris Christie, who need I remind you is a piece of shit who Jersey really didn't even want you. None of the other people on that stage that people could even fucking remember. And 45, who is still trying to gun, even though he's got 91 indictments to face down. The GOP is not looking great. And the fact that she is coming out on top to tell you the state of the GOP. 
but everybody is starting to see the trajectory of our country that we have had presidencies for over hundreds of years now and we have not had a female even close until just recently with vp harris and what the gop is trying to do is i guess circumvent and preempt our first female president by trying to put Nikki, I've shedded my true identity, Haley, into the mix. You could try, but there's not going to be the turnout you think it's going to be. And there'll be a way to show the more misogynistic GOP. Is. See, the Red America's not ready for a female president. We are. She's just got four more years of being vice president before we get her into that presidency. I know it pisses some of you off, but you've had your chance to have your president that looks like you in the seat and now those of us who know how to play the long game and strategize and want to organize and get voters serious about voting we're patient we told you we were going to shatter that glass ceiling we ain't joking anymore we're not going to wait for you and we're definitely not going to let this heifer be our first female president we had a qualified woman that didn't look like us and used Threw her away for a known, I grabbed them by their private parts type. So no, we will not be playing those games of Nikki Haley even remotely getting in. It will be a Southeast Asian woman. She will just happen to be a Southeast Asian and black woman. If you don't believe that, I am putting every bit of my energy to making sure that President Biden and now VP Harris get their re-election. But then I am going to put my full focus on calling VP Harris, President Harris. You can bet and believe on that, that Nikki Haley will not be America's first female president. I've got breath in my body. I just don't even understand what the GOP think they're doing. But like I said, I keep my ears and eyes to what I can. And this is not the first time that I have seen rumblings. And now that I know that she has a Koch brother back at her, the living one, which always spells trouble because they will funnel their money into what they think might be a short thing. It's how we got fucking 45 in the first place. But the fact that these rags can even talk about her financial backings means they really think that Nikki is the top contender and we need to keep our eye on the game they're trying to play because either she's trying to run interference while they try to figure out how to make 45 a thing again without looking like they're loyal to him which is weird because our even our current house is divided now because they want the new speaker to denounce january 6th and what do you need to denounce it's in 4k people committing domestic terrorism but that aside, the fact that even rags like the hell are now trying to declare Nikki the it girl, we need to keep our eye on our political prize because they're trying to take it by any means. And let me tell you, you've seen what the GOP is about, whether it's them fighting in our Congress, whether it's congressmen saying, I don't even know what I'm going to be able to run on. What can we say our party has done? Because the GOP is starting to realize that hate mongering, fear mongering, us versus them, isn't getting them anywhere. There's a lot more us versus the them. And they don't seem to finally, I think they're finally starting to understand that. But it's still not enough for their loyal. So those of you who aren't loyal to the cause of hating people and white supremacy, and welcome to the chat, DP. DP. I'm going to call you DP because I don't want to mess up your name. I feel like enough people are starting to see the game that the GOP is trying to run in our country to try to march us into fanatical fascism, that weird theocratic fascism that tells you who you can love, how you should look, how much income you should have, or if you don't make enough income, you're just a bum, and it's just, it's a mess. And we don't want to be marched into that. So instead of falling for the okie doke, pay attention. Like I said, I am not one to tell people how to vote, but normally when the incumbent has done as much as this president has done coming in with nothing to an ingrateful country that's wanting to talk mad shit about their age, but the fucker that they really wanted back is not that much younger than him. 
So I don't even even understand the age leans. President Biden might be an older man, but he's getting the fucking job done. So I'm not going to go against the actual working, functioning incumbent for whatever fuck shit the media wants to try to push. And that's why I said, be wary, because they're in your face. And the fact that they're declaring Nikki their conservative queen, good luck. She'll never get my vote, so good luck. I, my 2024 presidential vote is already locked. Unless by some weird option that President Biden says, I'm not running, and VP Harris has to run, or something else happens, there's no reason for me to even think about the 2024 elections more serious than making sure my ballot gets tallied proper. That's it. The only concern I have is focusing on getting my vote done, getting it tallied, and making sure that the president that I voted for and got in in 2021 continues up to 2028 and then hands the reins over to somebody competent. Has the full cabinet that helps make sure stuff gets done. I know people wanted to ding the traffic secretary, and that's what I had for last Tuesday before I took off because I wasn't feeling good, and Thanksgiving needed me, and I was not going to be taken out just to yell about what's going on. People want to ding Pete Buttigieg about stuff that's going on on TikTok. We've seen the videos of people abusing wheelchairs and stuff. I don't like the way disabled flyers have been mistreated by the TSA, but I do believe that Secretary Buttigieg takes this shit seriously. I don't think he would go on the record if he wasn't going to fully have it investigated, and I do think he takes that very seriously. I, I honestly feel like when you elect people that have at least enough of an adjacency of being marginalized in any way, shape, or form, they take seriously when shit like this goes down. And him seeing those TikToks, he was heated. I seen the interview. I was going to pull it up on Tuesday and show how fired up P. Buttigieg is about it. And like I said, you can pull up my Twitter history. I did not. I was not fair to Secretary Buttigieg back in the day when he was running for president. But for me, it was all fair game attacking his record because he was a small town mayor trying to wade into politics and brag about his prestige and Ivy League bullshit. And it was like, no, Junior, you do not have the chops to be president. Who the fuck are you? We do not know you. So yeah, I was hard on him. I was hard on Yang, too. I was hard on a lot of the presidential runners, point blank, because you have to be when you're a pragmatist. You want the best leader to get us out of the four years of fuck shit that 45 put us in. But I am wise enough to know when somebody is doing the proper thing. P. Buttigieg said, fine, I'm not ready for prime time. I'm not ready to be president yet, but I am ready to help America in any way I can. And he has been doing the thing as traffic secretary. He's secretary of transportation, basically. Not traffic secretary. I don't know where that came from. Secretary of transportation. He helped Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania when they had that catastrophic failure with that bridge explosion. I don't even want to call it explosion. It was a collapse. And in two weeks, they got the work done because they had the resources allocated between the governor and the transportation secretary. They were able to take something that would have fucked us up because I-95 is one of the busiest freeways in America, point blank. It's how a lot of us get up and down the East Coast. And to have that big section fucked up like that and they got it done in two weeks. That's what happens when your government is doing its job. That's why I'm focused on getting people focused on who represents you. I don't care what party line they tout as long as they're willing to get the fucking job done. But we have seen over the years a clear divide in those who are willing to legislate and put differences aside to make sure that everybody's comfortable and those who want hardline kowtowing towards weird faith leans, towards weird gender roles, towards weird, what they say, normality, while we have to look away from their abnormality, their deviances, and everything else. And we're tired of playing those games. And if you want to still be loyal to the conservative cause, you need to realize that you're giving in to white supremacy, you're giving in to misogyny, you're giving in to fundamentalism that won't even always include what you believe. 
you need to be willing to understand that we don't have to give in and we, we just don't want to give in to the GOP's lies and manipulation. We want a country that whether we all get along, whether we all worship or look or have the same cultural leanings, we just all want better. We want to live in stability. We want to have holidays where we're celebrating thanks and not just mourning who we lost. We just want to be. And in a good, stable nation, you might not always feel happy all the time because it's not realistic, but you know you have the right to complain and you won't feel fearful complaining about things. Now, you can say what you want about President Biden's age or whatnot, and some people want to ding him on superficial stuff. But the man has been working his ass off since he took office. After the country tried to revolt against free and fair elections, he still took that podium knowing that I'm not coming in to a united America, but I'm going to do my best to try to heal things. When we had the strike just here in Michigan with the United Auto Workers Union, he could have ignored it because there's a lot going on in the globe, need I remind you, here and abroad and being a part of NATO. But he came. He talked to people. He wanted workers to feel seen and heard because he grew up with this kind of life. He didn't turn his back on it just because he became president. So a lot of people who just don't understand Joe Biden have a lot of opinions about Joe Biden. And I honestly wish you would just let the man do his job. He was elected by over 20 million more of us than the other fucker. And that's the thing, Trump, you can't say that. Now when we look back on your presidency, we say things like election interference. Because it's now known. You had a lot of hands in your win. And I'm giving you just that little bit of a asterisk. You did win, but with dirty means. And we had to come out in ways that couldn't be countered because of how you did it last time. And that is why I said, take next year serious. Don't think just because we got that first win that it, could hap- it couldn't be taken from us. Take your voting seriously because we cannot afford the potential loss if we don't. It's a snowy day, y'all. I am feeling cozy. I exercise. I know it's like, it's a snowy day. Why are you in your uh, house dress? Because I'm in my house. And I'm in my room. And I should be relaxed. But we're going to go to, because I'm I'm having a lot more fun with this React than I care to admit. Let me get this transitioned over. You know. And I figured I'd combine two of my favorite new pastimes. One is calling out that heifer. And the other thing is just getting out my aggressions, whether it's exercise or whether it is watching YouTube now. Between writing the next novel and just dealing with real life stuff, I decided to try to home vlog. I'm going to let y'all in on a, a thing. My home life is not that interesting, at least not to me. I took some footage of the snow earlier, and I was like, who would want to watch this? Why would anybody find this interesting? I mean, I do want to show the cat box, and I might bring that video up, because I honestly did like the fact that we got the cat box up, and Max and Miss Kitty are just not having it at all. They're like, we got a barn. Why would you put this up? But eventually, hopefully, they will see... That hanging out on the deck with the snow isn't it. And they'll want to get into the little cat shelter that we built to keep them safe just in case. But, you know, cats are fucking finicky. That's what I've learned. Miss Callie and all of them. They're all finicky cats. And Callie, does, she wants no parts of the snow. So she's like, nah, I'm indoors. I can't be like them barn cats. But she did get out earlier. And it was funny because she was like, what is this? Nope. Get me back in. <laughs> it was freaking funny. But I'm going to pull up. I've got barbecue chilling. But I want Marley Hendrix thing. Because this is just part one. Of Chantel's nonsense. I don't think she understands. She is very chronicalized. With her nonsense. In her supposed health struggles. And like I said. I don't understand the chronically online like she is. Like, she shares way too much of her life, but on top of that, 
I have issue with the latest How Far because she is sharing. Uh oh. I really do gotta consider YouTube Premium because these ads are loud and annoying. The latest arc is how much can I share without really sharing stuff? We I noticed you didn't share the weight. You think you're slick. Miss, I just stand on the home scale, which we know you've already fucking completely crapped out, but you wouldn't share what the doctor legitimately weighed you on. This is how I know you're not taking this very serious health thing seriously. And I'm not going to violate HIPAA violations by showing the paperwork that you were willing to share allegedly uncensored. I'm just going to say that until you're ready to face your actual size, like I've had to face my actual size, you're not ready for actual weight loss or to change your life, which is what you've got to do at your age. But we're going to show you. Ooh, this is a little loud for me. Marley Hendricks. I'm going to right now. Just and I'm going to tell you right now, classic Chantel does not change from this Chantel that we see in Kuwait, her little wife life arc. So I don't know what she thinks we wanted her to go back to, but no, we just want you to stop struggling and start striving. And I'm not going to stop saying that. But I'm going to play a little bit of this before I interject because she says some dumb stuff as usual. But this is classic Chantal, and I want you to see how a lot of her cycle has not changed. If anything, maybe a slight fluctuation, but whatever. All right. At zero. What was that pinky thing? Three ninety nine. Lovely. I just want to be able to put my own socks on again. Like I can't put my own socks on. I need to wait for Pete to come on his break and put my socks on for me. <sighs> when I seen this, I was like, oh, I'm gonna wait. Because I was going to react to Classic Chantal now. Because she seems to think we only want to pick a Kuwaiti wife life. And I wasn't here back then. I did, I'm i completely new to the whole girl world scene. And honestly, I just was going to be a, a bystander like most. And so she decided to start picking some really low blow fights that she wouldn't stand by. And I don't like fake bitches. So I was like, you know what? I will wade in on her mukbangs or her cooking videos or the occasional rage stream because sometimes she does those. But instead, she's starting to put out her medical business and I'm not going to react to, her, to, to those papers. No, thank you. But then I seen this edit by Marley Hendricks and now that I know that I was giving her sympathy for things that we don't have a lot in common at all. She's the only thing this girl has ever run from was her problems. And everything is about the easy way out. And there's not going to be any easy way out of this diabetes arc for you, Chantal. You got to exercise. You got to listen to your doctors. And you got to eat a lot less. So your mukbang days, which is where your money's from, is over. Unless you're just going to tell us that you don't care about your health. Which I think you're going to tell us you don't. And we'll see you from this cycle. Coming, guys. I know you want your breakfast. You want the window open. I'm coming. You patient. Poor freaks. Sam. They're not freaks. They're cats. Take care I of them. I got my hairline right today. A lot of you people worry about what you're going to wear. Can't get your hair right. Not <laughs> really. I mean, honestly look so subjective and the older I get the more comfortable I like to be I like my house dresses unless I'm going out and when it's cold I like my jeans I keep it simple stupid keep it simple that's that's my life advice if you're good with fashion and it makes you comfortable that's your wheelhouse do it keep it simple though don't fret over stupid shit and she was always about superficial when she does absolutely no work so how can you be so fucking superficial when you do no personal work on yourself? It makes no sense. Hair day. This is a bad hair day, okay? When you have to fake your hairline, you're having a bad hair day. I've never had to fake my hairline. What? All the healthy food I'm going to be eating, that that will help. But probably not because I think it's a hormonal problem. Anyways, positivity. <laughs> positive, positive. The only thing that's going to get me through... I'm going to let her finish. ...is positivity and appreciating... The journey. And there's the Chantal cycle. Awakening, weight loss attempt, breakdown, and binge. They are so used to it, and I said it wrong because they say awakening is the end, but I don't think it's awakening for her. 
I honestly feel like she always does this. She gets a health scare or a little bit of a shake up and she goes, I'm going to start losing weight. I promise you. Said, I, I'm a new change woman. And then she starts and she tries for just a little bit and never lasts long. And then she starts to binge right up off the bat because she cannot kick that addiction. And I don't know what it's going to take. We've made jokes. I know that some of you are in some of them chats with me now. We've made jokes about how far it's going to go for you because you've got something serious now. 414 was the number that your fasting glucose was. That's not a good number at all. And I think it's close to what you weigh, too, whether you want to admit it or not. Big girl the big girl. Hips don't lie. Welcome to restart number, I don't even know. Pick a year. And okay, so look, no, I'm not going to pick a year. I will say this. As somebody who has struggled with weight and that my worst was 500, and I'm not saying that for kudos or head packs because I still got a long way to go to get back to my goal weight of two. So, yeah, it is tough. And there is a lot of psychological factors that both... I, as a diagnosed with issues, and her undiagnosed go through. But until you're willing to look at the problem and see what you've done to cause the problem and really take it on, all the stuff that comes out of this heifer's mouth is just BS. And there's a lot of stuff that comes out of this heifer's mouth that don't make sense. I was very serious when it came to uh, ending the mukbangs. She's never serious. Especially for now. Especially for now. Especially for now. As I'm going to be embarking on a... And I love how Marley doesn't play with them uh, about eating off camera, but she didn't stop the mukbangs. It's not a spoiler alert. You can go back not even a week ago and see her literally eating mountains of food. She just did one right before her little hospital drop video where she ate a full foot life sub and two bags of chips, and that was just what she showed us on camera. So don't believe what this chick says. That's what I've learned being new to this shit. Healing journey. And I know I've attempted this before many times. Yes, I have. But the alternative is not attempt anything and just give up and die, I guess. So that's not an option for me. Um, I have a trip to go on. I have many trips to go on. I have a life to live <laughs> as a healthy person. I've never experienced that being fully fully healthy and this yeah we know this is the same thing i just heard you say earlier in that video and it's like you regurgitate the same bs talking points we know about your struggle chantelle i want to see you start striving enough fucking excuses i know i'm yelling at classic chantal but for real it was like hearing this shit over and over and i can only imagine people that's been with you for seven years listening to the same cycle of regurgitated garbage i mean honestly i'm telling you as big girl who doesn't want what you got your nonsense your latest arc really jump start me into taking my routine seriously because i started falling off again making excuses we had just moved i was tired we got stuff set up and i was just like yeah i'll get you no do your routines Activity is so important at our age because you don't want to shut down. And I know I'm saying this from my bedroom because it looks like, oh, take advice from this girl who's laying in her bed. I'm laying in my bed after a day of doing stuff. I know it's hard because you're used to girl world girls who say things and then show their world where they barely do anything and they want pats on the head and praise. I'm not losing weight for other people. I'm losing it for me. So you'll see the results. I will keep coming in front of you is correct because there's no reason to hide. I know what I'm doing. There is no shame to my game. This is going to be my way of doing it, which I really have a firm belief in what I'm going to be embarking on. I'm going to fight tooth and nail like I've already done a million times since waking well, up. Well, alert. She loses that fight. Just binge out. I want to become a more spiritual being and see food in a different way i've been feeling and exactly beans two 12 inch subs when she knew she was going in and it's like i said in the last calling out the heifer and i mean it i honestly think that chantelle thinks that if she crashes herself that she will get a ton of sympathy 
I think it's a ploy not only to get more views to her channel, which is kind of sick in its own way, but I think the only time she ever gets positive engagement or any kind of attention and interaction is when people are sympathizing for her. So, of course, she would really poison herself with food that she knows she's not supposed to eat. She used bread that, honestly, I'm, I'm not a big, like, Subway type sandwich girl. If I'm going to go get a sandwich, I'd rather make it myself. But when you do, you're not supposed to use the bread that has cheese already baked in it, along with other additives. And she ate two of those, loaded down with mayo and other stuff. And from what I saw in that latest video, which once again, I'm not going to put too much of your medical business out there, but the fact that you're literally pissing brine should be a concern, Miss Sodium Queen. You're not taking the health stuff seriously, and yet you don't want critique, and that's not how the internet works, honey. That's just not. And this classic you shows us that you haven't learned a fucking thing. My body with so much... I'm telling you, Beans, it's just crazy. Processed she is. She's pissing brine. I was shocked. And these are things that I believe in. So if you don't believe in this, that's fine with you. For I don't believe it because you're a liar, but she literally drank pickle juice on fucking record and yeah she she she's crazy she she oof. her 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 own revelations of her health is it should scare anybody who isn't sure where you should be and it don't matter how big you are get started now everybody has a chance as long as you got breath in your body you can get yourself back and i'm saying this as somebody who's had to rebound if you don't give up you can get to whatever goal you're trying to get to she should not be who you follow though because this has been her constant since a while ago you but again this is my channel this is how i've always come this is how i've come to look at food and i have you'll see that in like previous videos on my channel as well um she gives her tells the whole like high vibrational food that pedro I feel like YouTube's ad breaks, like, save my sanity, because she's about to say some stupid shit about spiritual eating, which makes absolutely no sense, is completely in her head, and doesn't work, as you can see from her Kuwaiti wife-like art. Listen to a doctor. Get a dietitian. Know that even then, the amount of damage you do when you get over a certain size might be long lasting but it doesn't have to be complete shut down city for you but the fact that she's gonna lay some spiritual crap eh, i don't think so it's just like any other child okay wow what you eat like you are what you eat is like an actual philosophy so you are what you eat you become the energy you consume and it becomes your life this is some bullshit this is when she was new age Chantel. She's gone through so many phases, so many personalities. She is like a revolving door of just bullshit she picks up from the internet. I'm going to tell you right now, OMAD for a fat girl is going to fucking work. So stop doing OMAD. You need at least three sizable meals and not oversized. But portion where not only your brain feels full, but they're healthy enough to not make you sick. You need breakfast, lunch, and dinner if you're going to lose weight. And I know a lot of people don't believe that. Oh, how am I going to lose weight if I'm eating? And you're not eating all fucking day. You need three meals. No excuses. Too many of us make the mistake of, oh, I'll just skip it. I, I can go without. And then you're fucking hangry and you binge. It's one of the things they taught us at bariatric for weight loss. You can't play around. There's a reason why they say just have your three standards. Too many play those games. Oh, I'll oh man, I'll get to a point where I can just water fast and bitch. No, you're fucking around with your health doing that shit. Don't do it. Eat proper. Eat breakfast. Eat lunch. Eat dinner. And if you got a snack, use sensible snacks because snacking happens. Some of us do have oral fixations. Work around it. Work with a dietitian. They will teach you ways to handle that. But she doesn't want to hear that. So I'm not talking to Chantel, even though I know you're stalking my videos, bitch. So I'm going to be right now focusing on detox because for me, I'm so addicted. I'm in the pleasure trap right now. I'm in the fat, sugar, salt trap. And I need to reset my taste buds. I need to work on eating only 
very uh, foods that promote healing and health because I want to get rid of those the, the weird skin feelings things. that promote f everything she says sounds like complete bullshit because it is complete bullshit and it's funny hearing stuff like that because even that my wannabe health craze which is never a health craze because I don't like those terms you eat to live and you change your path you don't it's she's so food addicted it's so it's like the only love of her true life that even when she's trying to change her path she never gets away from the problem which is over fucking eating even when she tried to go healthy which i think they're going to show in a few flames that it's a massive piles of food that's your problem foodie you eat a lot and you're not willing to scale back a whole lot I've it's crazy on. i want to see if my hair will grow back I want to lose weight. I want to beat my breathing back. I want, there's so many things. And that's a good point too, Beans. It is really hard. Trust me. I am five foot three. I'm only a few inches taller than her, allegedly. She claims to be five foot one, but she never gets a proper height and weight. So we don't know. It is hard on most frames, but especially shorter frames to carry that much weight. But it's like another person joked, and it really is true. Because she's been doing it for so long, she might actually have some muscle mass there. Because she had to have that for a bit. But because she's gotten so lazy in the last year alone, her joints and limbs are probably fucking killing every time she has to walk a significant amount. But she's got to push. She's got to push and she's got to burn that fat. And that is the only way she's going to survive this diabetes arc of hers. This is not just a weight loss journey. If this was just about weight loss, sure. Whatever. I mean, it is about weight loss, but it's not just about weight loss. Weight loss will be a by byproduct of getting healthy and resetting. But if it was just about weight loss, then I would say, okay, I'm going to eat things in moderation and, um, you know, allow myself you to need that void moderation ain't working for you have that just makes me feel crappy and then the main reason i want to do a more cleansing kind of way of eating right now is because my stomach is all kinds of messed up like i have the worst stomach pain i have the worst nausea I her bowels as i've said because she even admitted in another uh mukbang the what i eat in a day to having a brick of cheese a brick of cheese a brick Whatever. I can't even break apart some of the fuck shit I've heard all week about Chantal's eating habits. I know more about her eating habits than my own, I think. The problem with her complaining about her digestive thing is she legitimately went on to do nothing about this. And she's just trying to pity party her viewers. And you can list all of your problems, but if you're not going to do something to tackle your problems, what the fuck are we supposed to do about that? Like, for real, I don't trauma dump on people because you are not here to soothe my trauma. You are here to listen to me rant about political news and social stuff and now apparently this YouTube fuck shit. But you aren't here to hear tense trauma because I am working on my problems. I know I have problems. Y'all can see some of my visible problems, but I'm working on those problems. And that's the best thing you can do if you're in this for the right reasons. Which Chantel is clearly not in it for the right reasons. She's in it to monetize her life. And that is why your life gets so critiqued. Because people are tired of seeing this shit over and I have over. IBS. I can hardly eat anything anymore without it sending me to the bathroom several times a day. Too so, much. Too much information. That being said, no I home training. My own socks on again. Like I can't put my own socks on. I need to wait for Pete to come on his break and put my socks on for me, so I can do. A That's a level of fucking lazy that don't make sense. So How do you get to that? that? What was that? Uh, yeah, Oof, that. that was a cankle. How do you sit there at your age? Because at this point, she was in her mid thirties, and literally, with no shame to that game, admit that. You're too fat to put your own socks on, ma'am. I was 500 pounds, and I always put my own fucking socks on my feet. So that's just, you don't want to bend. That's a level of entitlement fat that I still don't fucking understand. And maybe that's why it's easier for me when I get determined to pull the weight off, because I never want to get to the point where somebody has to bathe me, somebody has to do things for me that I can do for myself. Maybe it's the Gen X -er in me. There's absolutely no fucking way that I would even put on the internet that somebody would have to done something like that for me in the first place. But the fact that you could readily admit that you made Pete's put your socks up for Oh my god. Wow. I did not get deep into this one because I knew it was going to be a doozy. 
but I did not realize it was Pete's puts my socks on for me level fuck shit. Wow. Wow. That's probably best for me to just vlog, vlog my life away. No, um, it would have been better for you to walk. Walk away from all of this and do something about your health. But she still seems to think she can use the internet as her soundboard for her fuck shit struggles. And I'm sorry, honey, no. This is really bad. Classic Chantel is just as bad as current Chantel. Vlog this journey. Oh, ups, poor downs, BBJ. Ugly. I know that was well, her in the background. I mean, you know. So. I might have to skip. If my some journey of this. can help anybody going through it. It's not going to help anybody. I skip. was going to do the whole weaning thing, but that's not going to work for me because she doesn't know how to wean. I need to completely be abstinent of food that I'm addicted to. For I, I can't. And she doesn't do that either. Well, Look at that. Like that was just from her Thailand trip. trip. Their drug of choice every day. You know, it's that's how I have to treat it. These foods are a drug for me, and I have to eat clean. And over the subsequent days, was oh, this was is a lot of blah blah. 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 And that's what I have to do. I realize exactly now, she is to do moderation, trying to do intermittent fast, but still do mukbangs. Because mukbangs were she's serious, right? She's but serious back then, really but she's not a serious person. So that's very positive. You know, I was worried that that video would get like two thousand views or something. But I'm gonna focus more on. I'm not gonna really try not to focus on the numbers right now. And you now. know what? I get it. I don't really because I'm on Twitch more than I am YouTube. I use YouTube to upload to. I, and I know some people are like, you should do both. I, I can. I don't have the attention span for it yet. I know eventually I'll come over to the dark side and go live on YouTube. I'm just not ready for it. I like what I've learned with Twitch. It's all still a learning process for me, even two years in, because Twitch to me is I go on OBS, I upload, and that's it. I don't really think about it, and I can see the chat. I feel like YouTube would be a whole new ball game that I'm not ready to learn yet. And what I've seen of the way people debase themselves just to get the views, no, I don't want to have to not cuss and be myself to be clean enough for their AdSense, so I don't give a fuck about that. And I don't think monetization works for fatties because apparently just eating your life away tends to be the more lucrative. And I ain't doing that shit, so fuck it. If you don't want to see a real bitch, then keep it moving. But I don't trust the way YouTube monetizes some people's lives. And I'm not a fake person, so there's no fucking way I would be successful on YouTube the way these people are. So, nope, no thank you. This is my life. This is my health. All she cares um, about is views and money. so worth it, so. Bullshit. Yeah, she's telling me that she's smaller, though. We got eyes, Chantel. This is the shirt, the tank top. I remember. Yeah, but she says she's smaller. I really like it. I think oranges, each orange has just under 100 calories. But I'm not Whatever. Really I, and, and, and not I'm to get saying. mad at her about that, but her latest rage, well, not even, it was a low BMI rage as we called it she tried to say well you don't do what i do you never show your body you don't cam up i've been on my bike in front of people i've shown my house shant out there's nothing you could say you're trying to go other reaction channels who don't have to show themselves and don't want to show themselves but they've all admitted that they either have their own weight struggles not as bad as yours but they don't monetize their fucking lives so the fact that you keep telling people to show ourselves and then you don't even see the fact that even though we are bigger people too, we're still doing what we can for our own lifestyle changes. This is your life. You can play the game and fuck around. You will find out the hard way when your body really falls apart or shuts down because you are literally, need I remind you, pissing brine. That shit's crazy. I'm trying to eat when I'm actually hungry. She makes me I mad. Know the feeling of actual hunger versus just cravings agreed <laughs> beans which is fortunate for me she and she does not like when anybody pushes her back either this is pretty much the only produce i have right now so and i love oranges they are legit my fi i will eat an orange slice over any other fruit because i've always liked more citrusy tasting fruits the fact that she hates oranges she's just anti-health anyway anytime 
you see her making mukbangs, even when she cooks herself. She stays the fuck away from vegetables because she swears she can't make vegetables taste good. And that's the problem with a lot of people that get to our size. We tend to think that the only thing that tastes good is fried, sugary, or salty, and you have got to learn how to cook. And if you had a more, you know, international wheelhouse, which you're trying to convince us you did with your little Thailand trip, you would know that you can make vegetables taste good. Asian people know how to make vegetables taste good, whether you want to believe it or not. I need to go buy some more, like I said. So I'm going to eat these oranges. And I'll see you guys soon. That's a lot of oranges. You, need, you only need yeah, one so of those. Like under 10 minutes to cook these two. Uh, two sweet potatoes. I had two oranges only. I'm, 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 I know I'm going to get some people that hate me on this. I like my microwave for reheat and stuff. I do not use the microwave to cook. I, I, I Maybe it's my paranoia. Maybe it's my fear of radiation getting into the food. It's bad enough having to use it every once in a while to reheat stuff. I don't understand cooking with the microwave, especially stuff like potatoes. Now, my godmother did that a couple of times, and I still don't trust it. I don't like using the microwave to cook things like sweet potatoes and potatoes. We, you got an oven. Use your oven. and it, Wrap it in some foil, roast it, and you'll, you'll thank me for it. But using the microwave for your potato No. No. I... Mm -mm. I do not like microwave cooking like that. And I've seen way too many compilations on YouTube of people cooking their whole Thanksgiving in a microwave. No, don't do that. That's disgusting. Unless you have to. And that's not shaming those of you who only have a microwave. It happens. But those who have a full kitchen, utilize your kitchen, lazy. She got on my nerves. Some she did have cashew, four. Butter, pretty much made with cashews, coconut oil. It's actually a fat that doesn't upset my stomach. Certain fats because I don't have a gallbladder. <laughs> I have to be really careful. So like when you well maybe not eat so much butter. Like I don't even understand how much butter do you consume to where your gallbladder said nope that's it gotta go peace out. Like when you start losing limbs while well, organs inside of you that should tell you that. Maybe you're doing something wrong because honestly, honey, they only take it if it's not doing its function and you've been killing it for a while and there ain't enough almond butter in the world that she went right back to the regular butter. Spoiler alert. You guys would see me eat like pizza full of cheese, like extra cheese and ranch. I suffered for it. All I don't understand ranch on pizza. Night. That's disgusting. And that's the thing because honestly, these ad breaks are like Helping my sanity when she says stuff like that. You know it's giving you bowel problems. Your body is telling you, hey, I don't like this. I, I had to learn the hard way from the holiday food. That's why I only do it once a fucking year. Once a year, we go all out on Thanksgiving. We eat for about two or three days on it. And now I'm fucking sick of the shit. It's going to either be frozen or turned into a soup. I'm not going to waste it, but I can't eat no more of it. I, I can't. My body does not process the shit properly, even in little portions, and I'm just not going to torture myself with it. Your body was telling you, even back then, ranch doesn't work, the cheese doesn't work. And instead, she was defiant. She was defiantly dumb instead of defiantly oh, decent. Because of its massive scope for functionality. And yeah, 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 Wix. I tried you. Didn't like you. She never faces the... Con she's facing them now with the be this. Because that's the whole point of this whole detox process is to reset my taste buds. So even this was kind of pushing it, but <laughs> I love sweet. I love um, squashes and root vegetables. We know. We've like seen your, your hangry bees that you did the other day. You only got half, mm -hmm. though. It's food, right? What makes the food bizarre enjoyable? That's the problem with her that I've noticed that it's the whole, it's food, right? It's anything, but it shouldn't be. You should learn and work with a dietitian on things that you like, whether you like me. I'm a savory kind of like citrusy type person. So we started customing meals to where those little, you know, little portions of your brain that gets the light from it gets hit so that you know, okay, I've had it, I'm satisfied, 
I don't have to binge. I don't have to eat. But you have to work with people on that, stupid. The whole old food, I can do it myself. Clearly, you can't. Clearly. We're in 2023. This was a few years back. You cannot, honey. When I'm eating really healthy food, I was looking up prior. And it's a starch. What the fact that she's calling it a healthy food, and I love sweet potatoes. They're one of my favorite, but in moderation. You can't have them all the time. And a big-ass plate, the two that she, like, slathered in that almond butter, like, you didn't need all that. That was still way too much food. And she's not ready to do what she needs to to change her habits. She just continues to binge. And it doesn't matter if you binge healthy food. A binge is still a binge. You're not going to lose weight from it. It has what it can offer my body as fuel, as fuel, as fuel. You don't need no more fuel. Mm. You've got so much to burn. I'll be good after this because natural food, I obviously don't want to binge on, you know? Like, you shouldn't binge. Me. Some people do. Um, you shouldn't binge. Obviously this meal would have been better if I had some like steamed greens, with some apple cider vinegar, or you mean some other stuff. A, a plant meal, maybe instead, instead of just throwing shit that you're randomly seeing on YouTube? Because back then, I don't think TikTok was really a thing. The fact that you are still not willing to do the right things for your own health is scary. But I'm seeing all the same things in classic Chantal. It's it's not shocking me. It's just making my eyes roll. Like some nuts, or I don't know. But this is all I have for produce. I'm gonna do a weigh in right now. Even though I just ate. If anything, maybe. None of that like matters. But whatever. None of it matters. I'm gonna get on my scale. It's a home scale. You need a bariatric okay, scale. My calendar. Let's get to. And I'm not gonna stop saying that, but I'll let her <laughs> do this. Alright. Is that zero? A poor scale. Three ninety nine. <clears throat> Lovely. And this is when she was trying to be a little honest, but we found out through her own vlogs and through pizza stuff that she likes to manipulate that. So there's a good chance that that scale, even back then, was about 70 pounds off. Honestly, Chantal's never approached any of this seriously and never approached it with real honesty at all. I think she thought, well, if I look vulnerable, people will feel sorry for me and think I'm taking it seriously. But when you, you use these scales that are not built for girls our size, you're not taking it seriously. And I say our size, even though I know I'm smaller than you ever, because I go to an actual doctor. That was obvious sarcasm. So I'm going to mark it down. Oh, she wrote it down back then, too. This is hilarious. I will not be getting any higher than that. That is the highest I've ever weighed. Spoiler alert, it wasn't, and she will, and she's continuing to, because she's using the same bullshit cycle. This is crazy to me. I never, I like, when I was younger, I'm not going to say I never, because when younger, 20 years ago, 10, I thought, I'll do a food diary, and I'll do a journal. I found some of those, and it was just as lame, as stupid as this is. But that was 20 years ago, when I was in my 20s and thought that, I can do better. I don't need help. And I fucking ballooned. But when you're getting help and doing the right things, you don't have time to fucking journal because you're on your fucking routine. You don't have time to sit down and mark what you're eating because you're not constantly eating. It's not fucking rocket science. I don't understand why you even have to say this. It makes me angry, but I guess rage helps burn the calories too. Because fuck, man. This is just so ridiculous. And, uh... I'm not going to go any higher than that. It is. And, and that's a perfect... I love that, Marley. That's a perfect uh, 
thing to say, Beans, because it's true. They take advantage of people like this who don't really want to make the lifestyle change that's needed to, to get in a healthier mindset. Because it isn't just about weight loss. I tell people all the time, I'm just trying to get back to cute thick. I'm not trying to get to full fucking skinny because I can't do it. I don't like that life. I've lived that life. It's, it wasn't a long time living that life, but I didn't enjoy it. So I know where I want to get to, and that's what I'm working towards. What Chantel's doing is why the diet industry is a billion-dollar industry. Because they go after people like this that they're just not really ready for the lifestyle change. They don't care to change their life. They want that same repetitive cycle of, I'll, I'll make an attempt, but I'm going to fail, and then I'm going to reward myself with my binging, because that's my dopamine hit. I won't do, babes. I won't do. Potatoes are really filling. That's why I like eating them. I'm pretty full right now. But they're starch. Let's go get some groceries. Some and this food. was when she was allegedly pre-diabetic. And I'm going to warn some of you who think that, oh, I can have a healthy sweet potato every day. It's a starch. And if you're not working with a dietitian, that could be dangerous for you. Work with the people who know. I'm not even going to be in. I love potatoes. I don't eat them a lot. But I'm allowed potatoes because I did the bariatric fucking diet. Work with your doctors. Don't take advice from these YouTube dummies. And come back here and cook it. Let's go. So, as you can see here, I have a beautiful staircase. Yeah, I loved my staircase in Durham. I kept down because I was going up and down them. Use these stairs to my advantage by going up and down them. My new house is just one level and it kind of sucks. I'm going to do it three times right now. But I'm going to take a break in between each one. So this is going to be hard because my knees hurt. Um, I'm out of breath. I'm she wasn't going up and down those stairs. Pounds of excess weight on my I love that they did those. She should have. But she was shut in by then. She was only going out of the house to do food runs. She did not leave the house a lot. And how do I know? As somebody who's agoraphobic, not leaving the house is how I really started to balloon up. It happens. And having stairs didn't matter. She didn't have a kid to go after. I think that was the only reason why I didn't become a total shut-in in North Carolina. I had to get kiddo back and forth to school. We had functions. It kept me moving. Chantal had nothing to live for at that point. At all. This was pre-guy that she started chasing. And she was living with Pete. So she did not have to change anything about her routine or lifestyle at all. My frame. So, which is not a large frame. And I'm only five foot two. Now she's five for two. I thought she was five for one. She doesn't know her height or size or whatever. Oh, that's a jot. Going down should be easier than that, but wow. She steps too hard. I know that you're probably watching this, Heifer, or eventually gonna watch this. You're stepping too hard. There's a lot of weight on them joints. You need to lightly step, and you need to get into a pool. Water aerobics will be your friend. I cannot wait till the summer when we get our pool. I'm looking forward to it, y'all, because I'm fired up about this. This has been a lifestyle, all kinds of upgrades to my life change, and I've got stuff to live for. I keep dinging Chantel because she's acting like she got stuff to live for, but not really showing us that. And she's talking about her struggles, but I want to see you strive. She didn't even go that far. But she's smaller, y'all. Wow. Holy crap. You didn't even do that much work. For now, I'm trying to make it my goal to increase how much I can do it. So I'm gonna take a break, wait for my headache. I have a, have a bad headache when I, um, upon exertion. Wow. I don't think that's a good thing. It could be a sign of like hypertension, high blood pressure. Or your diabetes. Honestly speaking, fuck's sake with this. This is crazy to me. I I knew it was bad when they did that couple vlog few videos back and she barely walked four minutes and was ready to give up 
But she has always legitimately been like this, y'all. And there's a part two to this. The Chantel cycle shouldn't surprise anybody. And good lord, I didn't realize how dark it got. We are getting real snow here. So, excuse me. Sorry about that. Just a little bit of light over here. So I'm in my room. But I just don't understand what she thinks she's doing with her health. I don't know who she thinks she's fooling with this arrogance and attitude that those of us who are literally on this journey don't know what we're talking about but Chantel honey you're only hurting yourself if you're not going to do the bare minimum that shit that just reminds me of that Kuwaiti beach walk even worse because you could have used those stairs to really build up not only your stamina but ability to get up and down stairs which I don't think you even try anymore you sure as heck didn't try in Thailand they actually did, like, little escalators to get you up to that temple. That's embarrassing. And I honestly think that that relationship has been irreversibly damaged based on your own actions at Thailand. So we'll see. I'm going to watch this arc to the very bitter end because I don't think you're going to change. And watching your classic arc just showed me that. But we're going to get ready to wrap this up because, like I said, I only go from 4 to 5 normally on Tuesdays. I got to get ready to go make dinner, take care of the family. Thank you, everybody who sat in, Beans, DP, every, uh, Battler Club. I really appreciate you guys. I will be back on Friday with more Bonnet Chronicles, news, social, and all the other stuff that goes on in the week. Hopefully, it'll be a better, easy week. And once again, my condolences to the Carter family. I know that Miss Rosalind was a good soul. And I know that wherever she is now, she is still doing a thing for people. And just keep watch over President Carter because he's lost his 77-year partner. And I know it can't be easy. And right now, he's in hospice. So just keep your prayers for the Carter family. But I'm going to wrap this up, get this all uploaded to YouTube. Because it was file storage for me. But now, since I've been talking about this heifer... My subs have gone up. When we hit a 1,000, we will be doing a book and merch giveaway. So I'm just going to go slow and steady, you know. I'm excited about this, though, y'all, because I'm starting to take this YouTube thing a little bit more seriously. But you will never see me mukbang it. Fuck out of here with that. But I'm going to wrap this Ooh, up. Ooh, book and merch. <laughs> it's okay, honey. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're going to wrap it up. Go make some dinner. You all have a good one, and I will see you again soon. <laughs>